Hi, and welcome back to another tutorial for the SQL database application. In this video, we're finally at the end, and I'm going to show you some of the new features that you're going to do. So here's the table of contents of all of the things, and we are at the last item, which is called Future Features, which means you get to do them. My name is Shad Sluter, and I've been your guide here throughout the course. I teach software development at Grand Canyon University. If you'd like to get the full course on databases or on web development or on mobile, go to my website at studycoding.org and you can get a full degree almost just online. Okay, so let's talk about some of the unfinished business now that is left in this application. You can see on the screen here that I have completed a whole bunch of things without the video being on. Let's take a look at what they are and I'm going to challenge you to do them. And if you can't, I'll give you some source code that you can look at and learn from. So what did we do? So what I've done is I've added some features such as edit. So if I choose yellow submarine and choose edit, you can see that the, uh, the form over here is filled in. So that way we can change things. So let's say if I want to change the year from 68 to 69, you can see that the uh, update button shows that there was one row updated. And so the updated item appears in the list. Let's take a look down below here. So if I choose help and let's try editing help, let's go to the edit selected button and you can see that we have the same thing down below. We can either add a new track or in this case, edit one. Let's say I wanna change this to track number 13 and I'm also gonna change the album so you can see that they drop down. What would happen if this actually went with Abbey Road? Let's click the update and it'll give me a status message. And then if I choose Abbey Road, you're gonna see help now appears in the wrong album. Well, we better change that back so that it's going back to the help album. The other choice is the delete button. So if I wanted to get rid of somebody, I could just push the delete button and away it goes. Now, obviously there's some more code that's involved here. So let's take a look behind the scenes to see how this works. I've repurposed the uh, input form so that it not only can add a new album and uh, put down here a new track, I also have the ability to update and edit those things. So let's look in the DAO, which is where a lot of these SQL statements, or that's where all of the SQL statements are stored. So we've got some new features here. So you've got an update, we've got an add. What else is there? There's a delete. There is an update a track and get a new track. So all of the operations, the entire CRUD operations, which is create, update, read, and delete, they all require some special coding. So those are gonna be found inside of the new methods. Let's take a look at one of them. So for instance, update track. So when I do an update track, I'm expecting to get a object for the new track and then an updated item number. Let's see what we do with those inside of this uh, method. So here is the statement that's the key part. It says, I'm going to run a SQL statement, which is updating. So I copied this directly out of the uh, MySQL admin tool, and we're gonna be able to adapt it just like we did with the other items in previous tutorials. So we go through here and we add all the parameters and I get an updated rows number, which tells me how many rows were changed and then return it. Same thing is going to hold true here with the updated album. So I have two items. I say, give me a new album, give me the album ID that is going to be changed. And then when I go through here, I get the same idea. So I'm changing a bunch of albums. So there's a little bit more code that uh, I'm gonna let you look at. Let's try editing a, a selected. Um. So you're gonna see here that when we click that button, it's going to fill in a whole bunch of text values with the properties of the item that is being edited. And then I'm using a checkbox called uh, editing to be able to tell if the form should be used to update an item or to create a brand new one. And so if it's an update, then we're going to set this property to true and then set the label on the form to be the item number or the, uh, the track number. And so those are some tricks to making a uh, form have two purposes. So the best way maybe now to learn is to look at the source code for the project as it is. And of course, I'll put that on the uh, course at studycoding.org so you can take a look there. So if you'd like to learn how to build more sophisticated apps that are more web-based instead of just uh, forms like this is, that's probably where you're going to get a real job. Your jobs are going to be probably full-stack developer and those kind of uh, target keywords. 
but I hope you get a job. And if you do, I'd like you to let me know. So you can contact me on LinkedIn or at my YouTube channel. So it's been a great experience with you. I hope you learned a lot. We'll see you in the next course.